good day because we're celebrating. We are celebrating. What are we, what are celebrating? we celebrating? You oh, tell them. You oh. tell them. You tell them. Oh, I'll tell them. You tell them. You, you tell them. Oh, <laughs> We are celebrating. Pastor John and Kristen have been here serving us as pastors. For 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. That's a lifetime. Like, yeah. That's a lifetime. That's huge. That's almost your whole lifetime. Yes. Almost. Yeah. yeah. I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's crazy. So, so we are celebrating them and their service so fun. to our church and how the church has changed so much in 20 years. And their and hair. And, and their, their hair. You'll it's see good. it. We have a whole video, a video and it's just funny. It's but great. It's, it's great. It's really special. It's so great. I would encourage you guys to, you know, send them a letter, send them an email. Just yeah. thank them for their 20 years of faithfulness because we probably wouldn't be here without it. That's so right. That's it's right. It's just, it's great to see. Um, just how the Lord has moved through this church and, you know, how Pastor John has just allowed God to speak through him and so grow good. this congregation. So we love so him. We, we love Pastor Kristen and we're happy to celebrate 20 years. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm Tristan. I'm one of your online hosts. Yeah. If you're joining us for the first time. So put in the chat, celebrate. Thank you, Pastor John and Kristen. Let them know um, how much you love them and we love them yeah. too so much. But yeah, uh, my husband and I, Tim, are there to chat with you. And we love to hear where you are, where you're, where you're tuning in from online. Yeah. yeah. If you and need prayer. Yeah. And actually, if yes, if you need prayer, there's a special prayer button. You put, click the prayer button, and we go into a chat room, and we love to pray with you because we love that connection with you. Yeah. That's right. And you know, we have something fun coming up this week for our students. If you have a middle or high school student, so sixth to twelfth grade, we are having our youth night, Trish, on fun. Wednesday from six thirty, and then pickup starts at eight thirty. We're having a guest speaker, we're having an inflatable obstacle course, we're having free food, and we're doing a PS5 giveaway. So if you have a 6th to 12th grader, make sure they get here because they're not going to want to miss Youth Night on April 17th. It's going to be awesome. Pastor Julia, you are an amazing youth pastor. Thank you. Thank you. That kind of leads me to my next segue. Our yeah. next steps today is serving. So right. I'm biased, but all of our teams at this church are amazing, amazing. and they're a great place to serve. So even good. if you want to help serve online. So you yes. can fill out, um, if you go to my ALC, there's like a little serve button or on the app and you can fill that out, but make sure you are serving with your family because it's more fun to serve with family. It absolutely is. And it takes so many people yeah. to make this happen, to make all of this happen. So yeah. we are, we, we love our servants who serve. Yeah. So the servant's heart is wonderful. So we love so, that. So yep. good. That's right. So, so celebrate youth night and serve. We got some great stuff this week. We have awesome right. service today. But I think that's that's all we got for you. That's right. That's right. We are so glad you're here. And we look forward to a great service. Yeah. We'll see you. See ya. God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. 
Yes, Jesus, Lord, this morning we give you our praise. Jesus, we give you our praise this morning, God. Lord, whether we've come in and we've we've had un, you know unfathomable blessings this week, or we walked in with a diagnosis that we never thought we would receive, God, today, Lord, we come and we give you glory. That through the highs and the lows, through the ups and downs, you are still faithful. You got us through the last thing, so you'll get us through this thing, God. So, Lord, today, in every moment, we just come just to say you're faithful. That no matter what my eyes see, no matter what my ears hear, I will proclaim of your faithfulness, Jesus. So, come, Lord. Oh, come, King. Receive your glory. Because you're worthy this morning, Jesus. In every way, in every circumstance. We will trust in you because your word and your promises are good. 
that you will see us through all things. Amen, church. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that? Will you give God praise in this place? We give you all the glory this morning, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey, turn next to someone, uh, someone next to you. Say hello. Say it's good to see them this morning. I don't know about you, I about lost my breath singing that last one. <laughs> well, hey, we're so glad you're here at Abundant Life Church this morning. My prayer for you today is that whether you came up and you're, you know, came in, you're walking, you know, feel like you're walking on cloud nine, or maybe you came in and you just feel like you're walking through a valley, that this morning you'd be reminded of the grace and the peace and the presence of God, that all of us who call on him, no matter where we find ourselves today, his word promises us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. So we need to hold on to those promises and that hope this morning. Can we give it up for those who are new at Abundant Life Church today? Yeah, today maybe you found yourself here. Uh, we don't believe our God does accidents. And so if you're here, we believe God has a plan and a purpose for you. We'd love to connect with you today. This, the easiest way to do that is for you to fill out our digital connect card. You can pull out your smartphone and uh, scan a QR code. Or if you would rather talk to someone in person after the service, you can go to Info Central, which is in the foyer. But really, this is just the first step in making yourself known here at Abundant Life Church. It's really easy to come through the doors and make your way right back out. Um, that's not our heart here. We, we'd love to just be able to connect with you and wherever you're at on this journey with Jesus, whether you're not sure who he is, if you believe in him, or you maybe you've been following him for years and you're new here, we'd love to just come alongside you in whatever season of life you are in with the Lord. We're gonna move into our time at giving. Uh, there's some easy ways you can give here. Uh, you can give, if you're here in person, uh, we have our generosity boxes in the foyer or if you're online, or if you prefer to give digitally, uh, there's a few different ways here on the screen. You can go to mybuttonlife.com. You can go text my ALC to 77977 as well. And so just thank you for your generosity as a church. You know, over these last few weeks, we've been really kind of just continuing to ride what was Easter and um, just celebrating all the life change that has happened here. Over 60 people being baptized, over 100 salvations. That's nothing to bat an eye at. And that's not just to say, oh, hey, look what Abundant Life is doing. What we're saying is thank you. Thank you for giving. Thank you for partnering. Thank you for believing. Because it takes all of us. It takes all of us contributing and giving and giving of our time, talent, and treasure here at Abundant Life. And God is using so many houses across our, you know, so many churches and across this, um, this region. But I just thank you for your faithfulness here. And so... Um, because your generosity, because your faithfulness, we're able to continue ministry and can continue to do the, all God's called us to do in this house. And so today we're actually going to turn our attention and we are going to celebrate something awesome, something, a faithfulness of our pastors. So Pastor John and Kristen, this is their 20th anniversary here with us at Abundant Life Church. And can I just tell you in the church world, that's not normal. It's not normal for people to stay in a place for so long to invest. And I think because of your investment, because of your faithfulness, we've seen God's hand do some great and mighty things. And uh, I walked through these doors as a young man 13 years ago, not as young anymore, but 13 years ago, and the spirit of God met me in this place. And so thank you guys for your faithfulness. Yes, I am your son-in-law. Yes, I am biased towards you. I do love you. But it's been because of your faithfulness, even I'm blessed with the family and blessed with the home and all those things as well. And so thank you so much. And so what we've done is we, we reached out to some people in your lives and asked them to send us in um, some videos and just encouragement and just love towards you guys. So let's go ahead and turn our attention towards that video. Well, thank you, John and Kristen, for coming. It doesn't seem like it's been 20 years, but we're just grateful that the Lord has used you and given you the vision and the guidance, and we're looking forward to seeing what more things God will accomplish through you in the next 20 years. 20 years ago, some young kids showed up here, and we thought we'd have to start a young adult class for them. 
Well, it turned out that they were Arnie Pastor and his family. And I have been forever thankful that I was wrong about who they were because they've been a great blessing to this church, to this community, to the world, and to us. Hello, Pastor John and Pastor Kristen. Congratulations on serving and pastoring these past 20 years at Abundant Life Church. Not only have you made a powerful impact into our community, but you have made a powerful impact into my life and into Denise's life. We are both blessed to have you and we love you very much. Love you. Pastors John and Kristen, wow. Congratulations on 20 years. It's so amazing and we are so blessed to have been a part of that journey. We can honestly say we wouldn't be who we are without you. We love you guys. Hello, John and Kristen. We are so thankful for you and Abundant Life Church. Your church has supported us for many, many years, and you are, have always been our largest contributing church. And we are so thankful for you and the faithfulness. And John and Kristen, you guys are our online pastors wherever we are in the world, and we love you. And Kristen, I've known you all my life because you are my sister and my bestie. We love you guys, and congratulations. Congratulations, Kristen and John, on 20 years of pastoral service to Abundant Life. Yes, I'm proud of my daughter, Kristen, and husband, John, and all the wonderful things they've done and their talents and abilities. I've got a verse of scripture in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 20, that says, It's not by night, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So, with the Holy Spirit's uh, blessing and ministry upon your ministry, you've accomplished great things. God bless you. Love you. Hi, John and Kristen. This is Dad. I and Francine just want to say we were blessed when you answered the call to be a pastor. It was a lot of hard work and long hours, setting goals and meeting them, and you always putting the Lord first, taking the time for others and your godly living and your preaching changed the lives of people in your church for years to come. You had a vision and you followed through on it. You were equipped as a team and you worked very good together. You had a passion to see people grow in God and the Abundant Life Church will be an example outside the borders of your city and your state, and it will reach other churches, always reaching the lost and loving people no matter where they were. Thank you for 20 years. It wasn't easy, but thank you for 20 years of great leadership. Hey, John and Kristen, it's your brother, Matt, and uh, I can't believe it's been 20 years already. It's hard to believe you guys were only 12 years old when you started pastoring up on that life church. <laughs> uh, but anyways, you guys have made a huge impact and you continue to make a huge impact. And uh, thank you for serving the kingdom and building the kingdom and serving your community. You guys do it with absolute excellence. We love you. Thank you for 20 years and many more years that God has for you guys. Be blessed. Hey, Mom and Dad, it's your three favorite from the video. <laughs> We're the OGs. We've been with you guys uh, from the beginning, and we've seen the behind the scenes, on the stage. We've seen it all. We love you guys so much through it all. Yes. We've gotten to see and walk through the hardships, the joys, the beautiful nature of ministry, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for not only raising a church, but helping to raise our family. Yes, we love you guys and appreciate you so much, and we just want to say that we are so proud of you. Yes, we love you. Say, love, love you. you. Bye. 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 Hey, good morning. My name is Tim Arnold. I'm on the church board, and I don't know about you, but I'd like to see that Captain America make another appearance. Or maybe John rides a mechanical bull up here on stage. So, But I'd like to invite John and Kristen if they would come on up.
You can go ahead and have a seat. Of the three services, you all are the best clappers by far. <laughs> Longest standing ovations for today. Now, as, as I thought about what did I want, what I wanted to say to you, uh, God gave me a word this past week, and that word was shepherd. And I was thinking about what are the qualifications to be a shepherd, the guy who's actually out there watching the sheep day after day. What are the character traits that a shepherd has to have? And I thought, you know, a shepherd has to be very strong, but at the exact same time has to be gentle, kind, caring, and compassionate. Because a shepherd has to fight off the wolves threatening the flock, but the shepherd also has to be gentle with the flock at the same time. I also thought about, you know, to be a good shepherd, you have to have a sense of vision and purpose. That shepherd in the field knows where the safe place is that they need to take the sheep, but they don't always only know the destination. They also know the journey, how they're going to get the sheep there safely. And above all, to be a good shepherd, that shepherd has to love the flock as much as they love their own life. You hear stories in the Bible, Jesus is our good shepherd. He lays down in the gate to protect us. You know, when, when a sheep wanders off, the shepherd goes out and looks for that sheep and brings it back. And they're very kind and gentle with the flock. I think you know that you're appreciated and loved. I hope you do. Everybody here deeply appreciates uh, your role as pastors. And I, hopefully I've articulated one of the big reasons why. We love you because you are excellent shepherds for this church. I've seen you at times be very strong. You have to fight off the wolves out there. But I've also seen you be very gentle with this flock. You care for people. You pray with people. You hug them and care for them when they're hurting. But more than that, you have a strong sense of vision and purpose. You pray every day for God to reveal the future of this church to you. And you know where you are leading us and not just the destination, but how we're going to get there. And above all, the both of you love this flock deeply. And sometimes we're not the easiest flock to love, are we? But you love us deeply. You care for people when they're hurting. You are excellent shepherds for this church. You know, Jesus says at the end of John, when he's talking to Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep, tend my sheep. And you have done that beautifully for the past 20 years. And hopefully that will continue on for another 20 more. That's why this is the perfect picture to have up there, Pastor John holding the shepherd's crook. So I'd like to invite your family, any board members that are here, any staff that would like to come up and lay hands on John and Kristen. And we're going to have a prayer blessing over you. And I'll ask you, wherever you are, if you would just reach out a hand forward as we pray. Oh, gracious God, you are the God who equips and you are the God who calls. Oh, God, you call each of us to ministry and you equip us to be successful in that ministry. And Father, that is so true for John and Kristen. You called them here 20 years ago and you equip them for this ministry, for this service. And so, Father, we ask, we pray your blessing upon them today. We ask that you would continue to equip the both of them for the future. We ask that your Holy Spirit would just fill them and give them a driving passion for your church. And we offer this prayer in the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Man. Awesome. Wow. Yeah, this has been an amazing day. It's a humbling day. day, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's such a humbling day. And thank you for our staff, our board, who has honored us so well. And Thank you. Love you. Wow, 20 years. I can't believe Serving it. Serving together. 20 years. It's gone 20 fast. years. Yeah. It has been a yeah. journey, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem like it's been 20. <laughs> said that it, in every service. It really doesn't. doesn't seem that way, yeah. but I it's been a great journey. Our first Sunday here, and we were out in the foyer, and um, church had started. There's about 20 people in the <laughs> seats. And uh, Phil was up here with the transparency projector, and uh, there was an organ playing, and we walked, we were in the back doors. I looked at John, I said, I don't want to do this. And he said, let's go. <laughs> and he's said that ever since, and um, for the last 20 years, and we're not done. That's the exciting no. thing about it, That's is right. we got more 
Um, God has more. And that's the thing is this is fun to come and celebrate. It's beautiful to celebrate longevity, isn't it? Yeah. Longevity is a gift. And um, as we just celebrate this 20 years, you're not celebrating us. You're celebrating what God has done in our community, what God has done in this church, what God has done in your life, in people's lives, and yet what he's yet to do. And that's so exciting. So what an honor. What an honor. Mm -hmm. And it's been amazing because Kristen has been right by my side the whole Mm -hmm. time Mm -hmm. and uh, just serving and uh, together has been an awesome blessing here as well. I've just seen Mm -hmm. Kristen grow. And her gifting in the last 20 years has just blossomed and grown, and it's been amazing, your impact. And with our kids together, kids, it's yeah. been awesome. They're serving yeah. the Lord. Yeah. They're serving the church. You know, they grew up here. And, and uh, son-in-laws and grandbaby. Yeah. So what They a, found their spouses here. Yes, they them. did. Two of them found their spouses yeah. here, which is awesome. That's a yeah. great. That's a win. <laughs> nope. You're not going to say anything about Josiah? Nope, nope, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I did that last service. Y'all missed it. <laughs> okay. We have a grandson here. It's going to happen. You know, we all grew up here. Another look one at, is on the way. So we... <laughs> <laughs> Miracle, yeah. Uh, um, it's going to happen. Looking at that picture while we grew up here. We yeah, we did. And, and knowing <laughs> that some of the same people that were in those seats then are in those seats today, yeah. that's, that's amazing. That's what really I want to celebrate and honor is those people who've stuck with us, who've, who've um, really bared those burdens with us and stuck with us on the journey rather than switching churches to the latest fad or the latest pastor or the latest mm-hmm. thing um, or offense. People who've stuck with us when it wasn't easy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That yeah. says the world. And for those of you, so many people at the photo booth today have told us, next 20 years, I'm going to be on that wall. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, come on. Let's speak some longevity into this membership Amen. and into this body. All right. We're a family. And that's yeah. what families do. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We, like Kristen says, so many people have mm-hmm. been thanking us. We thank you yes. for yeah. doing this together. It really is an honor as we go together and we serve the kingdom of God with our staff, with our board, Mm -hmm. everybody that makes such a huge difference. The volunteers of this church just knocking it out of the park. It's been an honor and blessing. Yeah. And as Kristen said, that was our Sunday. We were installed here. I still have that uh, staff in my Mm -hmm. office as a continued reminder of the call that God has placed upon us here for this season. And I'm thankful. You see, um, I was rather thin. (laughs) <laughs> when we came, and some of the ladies in the church said, uh-huh. Pastor, we're going to fatten you they up. Did. And they've done a pretty good job they did, yeah. and uh, gained some yeah. weight, that's for oh. sure. But uh, we've all grown, haven't we? We've all grown. <laughs> yeah, hair changes yeah. and fads yeah. and all of that. Yeah. But yeah, what a, what yeah. a great uh, blessing reminder. Mm-hmm. Every service I've told this story because it's mm-hmm. impacted me. Um, Billy Graham used to have his library in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, you know the Reverend Billy Graham that made, mm-hmm. has made such a tremendous difference in our world for the kingdom. And uh, there in the, the museum there is on the wall is a pictured frame of an envelope. And somebody had written uh, Reverend Graham and said, Reverend Graham put the address in. And, and instead of Minneapolis, Minnesota, they put many applause and many a sorrows. Mm. And that really is the life that we all live. There's a lot of applause and there's a lot of sorrows, Mm -hmm. but we still keep moving and growing together because God has been incredibly faithful to us. Amen. Amen. For the glory of God. So thank you so much for honoring us today. We love you, church. God bless you. Wow, what a great day it's been, and uh, so thankful for each and every one of you. 
brings out so many emotions. And looking back, uh, they're good, good memories that uh, where God has brought us and where he's taking us to as well. I want to welcome those that are watching us online to every person here as well. So thankful. Man, our worship was so good today, wasn't it? I hope you're just drinking that in and just worshiping the Lord and just allowing him to move. We started our series last week on the I Am series, and it's about you and who God has called you to be. Because we've been saying knowing who you are in Jesus is very powerful. It's very powerful. And then acting on that and what you know is very powerful as well. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, this is our theme verse for this series. But you are a chosen people, you're a royal priesthood, you're a holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Man, if you ever forget who God's called you to be, you should go to that scripture verse in 1 Peter. And what he said and what he's spoken over our lives as his children is very powerful and very revealing of how he feels about us. I'm curious today, how many of you online in the room would say that you are an influencer. Come on, can I just see your hands? Yeah. Okay, there's, there, there's quite a few hands, but most people's hands, and this has been this way in all three services, is not raised right now. But my goal is to change your opinion of the assessment about yourself and see that you really are an influencer. Week number one, we discovered last week, we talked about I am love, and we talked about Zacchaeus and God's love for him. Today, I want to talk to you about this. I am influential. I am influential. Would you say it with me? I am influential. I believe and we know that we are called to be a light in this world and to show the love of God day in, day out. And uh, this statement, if you think about it, is very powerful that, that you and I have no idea maybe on one word of encouragement, one conversation, one expression of love that might change someone's life. You have no idea how God might use that. One moment, a generous expression into the life of another person to love them towards the grace of God. So I believe truly we live in a day and you see this as well, where influencer has been misrepresented because our culture has hijacked the term influencer. And I'll tell you what I mean by that is I, I went online, I Googled it, looked it up and said, what is an influencer? And it came out to this definition is an individual who has the power to affect buying decision of others because of their authority, knowledge, or relationship with their audience. And I took a moment and thought about that. I thought, Really? That's what an influencer is, someone who has influence over somebody's purchasing decisions because of the number of followers they have on social media accounts. And it's confusing because really when I was growing up, an influencer was often a teacher. It was maybe a, a good parent or a coach, a, a good friend that has influenced you, someone who uh, taught your uh, Sunday school was an influencer. And today, unfortunately, the term has been hijacked. And many people would say, well, an influencer, celebrity, the content creator, someone who amassed great numbers of followers on social media. But what I hope to do today is, as well, convince us that we need to reclaim the word influencer. Can you say amen to that? And I want you to see yourself as an influencer because you have no idea on how God could use one word of encouragement that you have for somebody else, one moment, one expression of faith to change them, that one prayer. And we understand that as disciples, we are called to be an influencer for Jesus Christ. I want to go to Matthew chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, return there with me. The, Matthew uses two metaphors that I want to talk about on our influence in the world that we live in. Here's what he says in verse 13. He says, you are the salt of the earth. What does salt do? Well, salt purifies, it preserves, and it adds flavor. Nudge your neighbor and say, you're kind of salty. That's a good thing. Not a mean way. You're kind of salty. Come on, tell them you're kind of salty. Not salty, bro. That's the bad part. But, you know, you're salty. It tell, tell the person on the other side of you, you're kind of shiny too. You're kind of shiny. Kind of shiny. Yeah, right? You are. He said, you're salt. And then Jesus said, you're also the light of the world. You're shiny. A town built on a hill 
cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on stands. Why? Because it gives light to everyone in the house. It shines, darkness overcomes the light, and uh, is never overcome by the light. And Jesus says, you are the light. In the same way, Jesus said, let your light shine before others. Let your love influence people toward Jesus Christ. Let it shine so they may see your good deeds and do what? And glorify your Father in heaven. You know, as born-again believers, our number one goal should be to glorify God every day that we are alive. Amen? That's true. We need to reclaim the true meaning of what it is to be an influencer. You know, I'm not against influencers in the culture, but the problem with our current view of influence is that it typically starts with a platform. It's being said, you know, the size of your platform determines the scope of your influence, whether that's a literal platform, whether that's a social media platform. And I think it starts with something different, that true and lasting influence starts with people before platform. It should always start with people. And the good news is, is that every person in this room has a sphere of influence that you come in contact with every single day. You are called to be an influencer. You have no idea how God could use this one moment to plant a seed that will grow into real and lasting influence in the life of somebody that you love. Now, let's go to the story that I love so much in John chapter 4. It's about a woman. You probably know it well. No one ever thought she would have influence, but the word's going to tell us different. The context of the story, Jesus is on a journey. He's passing through Samaria, which was a very unusual choice. The disciples wouldn't even have expected him to even do it because Jews did not interact with Samaritans because Samaritans were half Jewish, half Gentile, and the Jews hated the Samaritans. They believed this in that day. You were less than human and you were worse than a dog. That's what they believed about them. Well, Jesus, once again, he comes upon the scene and he shocks everybody. He sat down by a well in the middle of the day in order to rest. And a Samaritan woman comes up to him and Jesus asks her for a drink. He he dignifies her by starting a conversation and she's thrown completely off guard. In verse 9, it says the woman was surprised. She's shocked. She's actually overwhelmed. She's beside herself that Jesus would even do this. This is unheard of. No Jewish man would ever approach a Samaritan woman. This is out of context. She said to Jesus, you're a Jew. I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking for a, a drink from me? She replied with love. You could sense his love. If you only knew the gift God has for you. Boy, there's a lot of love in that, those words. If you only knew the gift that God has for you and you know who you're speaking to, and I would give you living water. She's intrigued. She's confused. Sir, but you don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. How can I get water? And Jesus replies in verse 13, anyone who drinks of this water, this natural water, he's saying, will soon become thirsty. But those who drink of the water I give will never be thirsty again. This woman notices something is different about this man, and she says, please, sir, may I have some living water? Verse 16, Jesus said, Go get your husband. Jesus told her, I, and, and the, Jesus told her to do that. And she said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband. You have five husbands, and you're not even married to the one man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth, sir. You must be a prophet. There wasn't a Jewish man anywhere in that day who would have interacted with this woman. But Jesus approaches her with such a love, and he dignifies her. And he honors her all the time knowing that she is an outcast in her own community. Divorced five times, shacking up. That may raise some eyebrows nowadays, not as much as it did before. But in that day, she would have been shunned. She she would have been the woman that everybody whispered about. Stay away from her. Keep your husband away from her. She's nothing but bad news. And Jesus, he knew all of this. He knew what was happening in her life. He, he doesn't look at her as the immoral woman, but instead a miracle that is waiting to happen. You know, there are miracles that are waiting to happen in your sphere of influence right now. 
There, there are miracles of people's lives that need to be changed and have the conversation. Maybe it's just coming and having the conversation with somebody you wouldn't ever go to and you dignify that person. You talk to them. You share your story with them. You tell them about the Lord. That, that would have raised the eyebrows. That's for sure in our day. But in that day, it would have been absolutely shunned. Why would a Jewish man speak to me, show me honor, show me respect, and know everything about my life? Perhaps this is the one we've been waiting for. Could this be the Messiah? In verse 28, the Bible says, the woman left her water jar beside the well, ran back to the village, telling everybody, come and see a man who told me everything I've ever done. In that passage, those are powerful words to me. Come and see a man. This man told me everything I had ever done. Could he possibly be the Messiah? What's happening after the fact? The people came streaming from the village to see Jesus. What do we see in this story? First of all, no matter how bad your life is messed up, no, how, no you're not too far gone for the love of Jesus to reach into your life. You're never too far gone is what I want you to hear. This is what God wants us to hear today. And then, then we see the town outcast, the one everybody else whispers about, going in and enthusiastically telling people, this may be the one. The, this broken woman, the, this messed up woman, the, the, the woman everybody is whispering about, that's the one, the immoral one, right? Immediately, this woman becomes an influencer in that day. And her story shows us you don't have to have it all together to influence somebody towards Jesus, right? You don't have to have it all together. You know, you don't have to go to a seminary and get a degree. You don't have to pray powerful prayers all the time and know what exactly it is in the Bible to be an influencer. You don't have to have it all together. And I believe, though, this is what keeps many in the body of Christ from thinking that they can be and will be a real influencer for Jesus because we're waiting to get our life all together first before we think we can make an influence. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. I just want to tell you that today, right? Just look at the Bible and who God used, right? Look at their past. He knows our past. And by the way, everybody's got a past, right? We've done something we shouldn't have done somewhere, somehow, sometime. But God is using you right now. You don't have to get all cleaned up and think you'll be perfect. You don't have to fix everything right now to be an influence. You, you know Jesus, you, you're in love with him, and you care about the people that are around you, and you can immediately be the light in this world and salt to those around you. You just need to care about people. You don't need 4,000 followers to have a platform. You just need to care about the people that are around you. You're an influencer for him. So let your light shine. Let salt do what salt does. Listen, you have no idea today, maybe one word, one prayer, one act of love, expression, you might influence somebody towards Jesus. The woman goes back to the village and tells everybody, and the disciples come back to Jesus, and all they have to say is they're hungry. It's kind of funny to me, right? They said, have you eaten Jesus? And Jesus goes spiritual with them. He said, my food is to do the will of God first. That's my food. That's what I'm called to do. I'm called to the lost sheep. And he goes on to say, the field is ripe to harvest. He's using a farming metaphor. And, and the harvest was always, and it's always about changed lives. The field's ripe for harvest, but the laborers are few. For our purpose today, maybe we could say this. Listen, church, the field is ripe for harvest, but the influencers are few. And what I encourage you to do is don't let culture rob you from your calling by categorizing influencers as someone only on social media. It doesn't start with a platform. Something I've also said in all three services now is this issue as a pastor. I feel I can speak a little bit into it, but we live in a world right now where uh, people are really worshiping celebrity pastors. And I have a big problem with that. Because then we've made it about ourselves and how large our platform is and look at me and be drawn to that rather than being drawn to Jesus Christ, the one that can truly change your life, right? You're an influencer today. You don't have to have 4,000 people following you. You do what God has called you to do now where he's planted you in your sphere of influence. Verse 39 
It says many Samaritans. That statement alone is shocking. Put yourself in that day. Put yourself in that era. You see that many Samaritans followed Jesus and had faith in him, but many, they we see them streaming out because why? They believed in Jesus. They wanted to follow Jesus because of what this one woman said and did. They came out to see him. They begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed two more days, long enough for many to hear his message and believe. Who does God use? Not an Instagram star. Not a professional athlete, not a celebrity, not a content creator, a regular, ordinary, everyday, broken, sinful woman who had been transformed by Jesus. You have influence right now exactly where God has placed you. Quit trying to leave the place God's planted you. And stay there and keep influencing for the glory of God. The other thing we learn from the story is you don't have to have your whole life together to have influence. You don't have to be perfect. When you listen to somebody at work that's hurting and you represent the love of Jesus by not judging them but loving them simply because of who they are, you're an influencer. When you post a scripture verse, uh, you're influencing someone that might not even know. Maybe it's by the way that you worship. You know, by the way you worship is an influence as well by what you do, by how you carry yourself, by who you are, whose you are, you can be an influence. So let's not let culture rob us from God's calling. If you know Jesus, you're salt and light. Let salt do what it does best. And let your light shine because God's created you to influence others to the love of Jesus. And here's another thing I want to say in our culture where everything has to be immediate, immediate is that influence isn't always instant. Influence isn't always obvious at first. It takes time. But our culture says you're going to see it immediately. Well, that may happen with a few, but it's not going to happen with every person that you have a sphere of influence with. Because just because you don't see the harvest doesn't mean the seed didn't take root. And we want to see it come through the soil like immediately, but that generally is not how it happens, but it takes time. We want to see fruit right now, but that generally isn't how it happens because just because you don't see the harvest, don't, it doesn't mean the seed didn't take root. So keep praying and keep listening. Keep going through the struggle with people, right? It's not always instantaneous or obvious. It's going to take some time because God's doing a work we can't even see. But he's doing it. You need to understand that your influence is greater than you think. And I'm going to tell you something. I believe in you that you are making that difference. We live in such a day right now where we're trying to make sense many times of what's going on in the world. You turn the news on. What I'm encouraging you to do as a church, we need to be praying for Israel. And we need to be standing with Israel. That's not my words. That's the word of the Lord. We're to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That's a scripture. We need to be standing with our brothers and sisters. What's happening there is, is over and over again is in that when you open your Bible, this is what the word of God says is happening in these last days. You know the word, you can open it up with confidence and say, that's in the word of the Lord. The nations will come against Israel try to defeat them they won't be defeated because it's God's people we got a, I got an email this last week from uh, Dennis Karp who came and did the uh, Messiah and the Passover uh, a few weeks ago and his memo line was rumors and then he went all the way down the list and said all the ways social media is lying to you about Israel this is a man on the ground. This isn't somebody stateside. He's on the ground in Israel. He loves the Lord and he's going through bit by bit by bit by bit and saying all the lies. There's a lot of deceitfulness that's happening out there. We need to be people that are living and hearing the truth. Amen? Standing with our brothers and sisters. God has a plan. God is bringing the Israelites home. That's biblical as well. 
And we need to be people that are people of confidence in these days that we don't have to have fear in our hearts because of what's taking place. We have our faith in God and we can speak from that confidence in this hour to let people know this is all in God's plan. This is what he prophesied. And he is our soon coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There's a confidence that you can have today. And when you're talking to people about Jesus, you can say, be rest assured because God's word said these things would happen, but do not fear, then the end will come. Let's pray. Father, I am so thankful for the power of your son, Jesus, that we would see ourselves, God, as you see us. We would know that we are a chosen people a holy nation called out Lord to give you praise and give you thanks we no longer live in darkness but we live in the light I pray that as followers of you today that we would say you know what God I want to see myself as you see me and I can see that in the word of God and what you've spoken over me I want to be more influential I want to be more salty I want to Uh, shine the light that you have given to me brighter. I want to do it, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, we know where we're at. And we have a confidence in your word. You're taking care of us. We're so thankful that, God, you have been faithful to us. Maybe today as you're here, maybe online, say, you know what? I want to be more influential. I want to be more salty. I want to be brighter. I want to shine bright in this hour where it is so dark. If that's you, would you just raise your hand? Say, yes, that's me. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every hand that is being raised now. Lord, that you are making us more influential in our sphere of influence in Jesus' name. Maybe there's those of you that are here today and as you've heard this word or throughout this week, you've felt the tug of the Holy Spirit upon your heart that that, uh, you maybe have never given your life to the Lord and asked him to be your savior. And may you come today and you hear this story about the woman at the well who who had a past and Jesus knew everything about her and still loved her. That's the love of God that is here and in this room that I want to offer to you today that you would come and find the Lord Jesus as your savior. You would come and ask for forgiveness. You would come thanking Jesus for what he's done for you and I on the cross and that he rose again so that we can have freedom. You come today and say, you know what? I've never raised my hand before, but today I felt that tug upon my heart that I need to give my life to the Lord. That's the love of God. That's the Holy Spirit that's drawing you to Jesus right now in this room. And if that is your decision to accept Christ Jesus as your Lord, would you raise your hand? Thank you. See that hand see that hand over here on my left see this hand here on my right see that hand in the balcony thank you Lord God I pray right now that you would just envelop those that raise their hands with your love As they're inviting you in Lord there's going to come a newness There's going to be the living water that you promised that is abundant, that is going to cleanse and wash them, Lord. It's going to fill them up and it's going to leave this place a different person no matter what we've done. That God, you've called us to be an influencer for you. Thank you for lives that are being changed. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said amen. Come on, can you give Jesus thanks for lives? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you for saving us and redeeming us. Those of you that raise your hand, I, we'd love to talk with you, one of our staff members. The next step is our growth track. Find out more about God, your relationship with him and what we believe as a church. We'd love to have you go through that. You can find that on uh, our website, our mobile app as well. And uh, we'd love to help you take the next step of your journey. We have resources at the Info Central desk as well. We have a Bible we'd love to put in your hands. Just come and talk with us. We want to help you grow in Him. 
So thankful for our volunteer A-team members that make it happen week in and week out here at the Abundant Life Church. Here's a video about that. Hey, Abundant Life. It is our heart to see every person to connect with Jesus and to connect with others. And one of the ways that we can connect with others is by serving on an A-team. Alec, what is an A-team? Well, I'm glad you asked. They're an awesome group of people yes, that makes ministry are. happen every week around here. They are a dedicated team that serves God with their gifts from the parking lot to the platform. Lives are being changed. Yep, and we encourage you to join a team make new friends, and own the atmosphere through serving. And the easiest way to do that today is to click on Next Steps in our mobile app, and then click Serve, then sign up to serve, and then pick an area that you would like to serve in. There's so many great options. Absolutely. Listen, we will contact you with more information. We hope you join the A-Team today. Today. Booyah! Booyah! A-Team! Let's go! Let's hey. do it! I'm Mr. T. I've been in the pool. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> da, 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 da. Ba, 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 ba. I don't know this. <laughs> we had to do an A-team reference, of course, as always. Hey, listen, like Pastor John said, we could not do Sundays, the midweeks, uh, all the ministries without our amazing A-team volunteers. And so thank you guys who are serving. And if you're not, yeah, give them a round of applause. If you're not serving, man, what better way to connect with Jesus and connect with others than using your God-given gifts? So, if you're not serving, go to the website, go to the app, come talk to us at Info Central, and we'd love to get you plugged in starting today. You would not regret it. It's an amazing, uh, amazing experience when I get to rub shoulders with others and serve in the areas that I'm most passionate about and the impact that we're all able to make together to continue to give him glory and advance his kingdom. So I hope you guys are passionate about that as well. Join an A-team today. Listen, we want to continue to honor Pastor John and Pastor Chris, and they're out there right now. If you guys want to come get a picture with them, there's a photo booth out there. You can get a picture with them. Uh, we have cupcakes to celebrate their special day. Uh, there's even a uh, photo frames and notes that you guys can leave some encouraging words for them. But I know they will be, continue to be truly honored uh, by your guys' love and encouraging words today. Let's, let's go ahead. Let's stand up. I want to continue to encourage you guys. Be an influencer for Jesus Christ in all that you say and do. Make sure you guys come back next week as we continue this series. We love you. Have a great week. God bless you.